Yo guys, welcome back to another video. I made a video on my channel recently about installing Windows, well it wasn't really recently, it was a while back, installing Windows 10 on a MacBook, it's right here if you want to watch it. And after I installed it, I really couldn't use it because Windows 10 is not really supported, like just installed on the hard drive of a MacBook. I never really used it and it was kind of the most pointless video I've ever made because it really didn't even work. But one of the software that does work on a Mac instead of installing Mac software like you should on a MacBook because that's what's definitely supported is Ubuntu, uh, the Linux Ubuntu. So in this video I'm going to pretty much show you how to install it because it is actually supported quite well. Like everything works on it. It's right there. I'm installing some updates on it. So pretty much in this video I'm just going to go over the installation creating a USB, a bootable USB drive and installing it super easy actually and so i'm just gonna do step by step on how to install it. it's kind of easy and yeah without further ado let's get started so first things first we're gonna need to create a bootable usb so i have an 8 gig sand disk here and i plugged it into my computer 8 gig or higher is recommended i don't even think you can go lower than that and the two well you're gonna need two software rufus to make the bootable USB and also Ubuntu itself. So I have these links in the description. Here is Rufus, it's easy here, newest version, and Ubuntu 18.04.2. You can download that one. I think that's the version I have, and that's what I used anyway. So after you download both of those, it shouldn't take too long. I mean, Ubuntu will be decent size. It should be a .iso file, I'm pretty sure. And after that's downloaded, get your files, find Rufus, and it should run as administrator when you double click on it. And then here it is open. After you plug in your USB drive, it should pop up immediately and then give you a bunch of options. If I zoom in here, you can see them. And pretty much all you have to do is don't worry about anything. I click this little icon beside ISO file or ISO image and then find your Ubuntu file. Find right down here, so I'll click on it, and click open, and then I'll click start, and then it takes about 10 minutes, and then it creates your bootable USB, and that's pretty much it for the USB side, and then we can move on to actually installing it directly onto the Mac. So, that's pretty easy. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the description, and also other links for the software will be, will be in the description as well. So guys, after we created the bootable USB drive, which I have right here, it's a SanDisk 8 gig, which I used. Now the installation process is quite easy. Just plug it into an available USB slot or port that is, and there we go. And now to power up the laptop, we're gonna hold the option key on the keyboard. So it's the option key on the Mac, and then to press the power button and continue to hold the option key and then we'll get to like a boot sequence type thing, sort of like Windows has, but it's on a Mac. So it makes a noise and then a sound. Like so. And then we should be presented with two options. Boot into the hard drive itself, which I already have installed Ubuntu on or boot off of the USB or install off of the USB. So we're gonna actually click this one. I'm not gonna go through the whole entire installation process because, well, that would be kind of ridiculous if I already have it installed, but I'm gonna show you what I did and it's just easier if you can follow instructions that way. So once you click on it, it takes you to a black screen and you have a couple options here. A couple options that we have is to install. You can also try it without even installing, which is super cool to see if it does work and if you like it. But uh, so we're just gonna click install because well, that's what we wanna do. So I'm gonna hit enter here and then begin the installation process. So I don't know how long, it should roughly take 20, actually it does take quite a longer than I expected. It's probably 25 minutes um, total to install because it has to copy all the files. And here we go, the beginning of the installation process. So first things first, English, of course. So click continue. And this is actually taking longer than I thought. Okay, there we go, keyboard. That seems to be good. I'm American, so normal installation seems to be fine. 
Okay, it says I currently have it installed, which I do. I'm not going to reinstall it, nor am I going to install it as alongside, because that would be kind of weird and ridiculous. But I guess if you want to do that, you can. So, pretty much, if I click continue, I don't think it should do it right away. Okay, yeah, this pretty much is the end, because install now. So, I'm going to quit. It's very easy to set up, and then it copies the file over and... It'll probably, yeah, you have to restart once or twice, maybe. It's really easy. If you have any questions, just leave it in the description, and I'll try to help you. But after that, it's pretty much done, and it should boot up. And then you have to create, well, you have to uh, give your name and password. That's uh, another thing you have to do. And then I pretty much think that you are all set up and ready to go. It should boot directly in to Ubuntu for the first time. So I'm gonna quit now and show you that everything um, that everything is working. So I'm just gonna cut the power. <laughs> okay, so I have a MagSafe and if you take it out, okay, I have a MagSafe right here and the battery of this thing is completely 100% shot. So I have to have it always plugged in. So if I turn it on here, let me take out the USB. It should boot directly into Ubuntu. Um, 18.04.2 maybe? I don't- I forget what it is. Now one of the problems that I actually have with this laptop, good time to talk about it I guess, is the fact that it only has two USB ports on this side. And so, one is dedicated to Wi-Fi and the other one's to the wireless mouse because using the mouse pad doesn't have right click on it, which is super annoying. And so I dedicate these to the Wi-Fi and the mouse. And so having an extra USB is not available. I guess you get one of those external USB things, which is which fixes that problem. But uh, yeah, booting in here doesn't take that long usually, but it does take time some time because I mean this laptop is from 2008, therefore it's like 10 years old. So there we go. We just booted to the desktop, so it's gonna be a bit slow right now. And here we have Wi-Fi. See, one of the biggest problems is that wi internal Wi-Fi card. I couldn't get the drivers to run or it doesn't exist or something because it doesn't show up with a Wi-Fi card. So I actually have to use an external one, little USB thing here. It's like this price. I'm going to put it up on screen now because I forget how much it costs. It's a tiny USB Wi-Fi card. It's amazing. It's really good. Anyway, um, on the keyboard we have the volume, which works, which with the windows it wouldn't. We also have the brightness, which works, and pretty much the keyboard is supported in every way. So that's really nice. Loading some of the applications here. It has everything that Linux would usually have, Firefox and stuff like that. So I installed Civilization 3. It has some weird glitching error and it really doesn't work. You can use it with a wine config to run Windows applications. So overall, this is actually kind of a surprise that everything works as the way it should. Now, one of the things I couldn't is the camera, which isn't that big of a deal to me. I think if I put a new battery in, because the one doesn't even exist, well it does, it just, it doesn't hold any capacity whatsoever. But obviously, compare this to a 2019 laptop, it uh, doesn't really compete. Actually, one of the cool things I can show you is I have an external monitor right here right there it's a samson something and uh i picked up one of these it's a mini display port to vga or d sub whatever you want to call it and surprisingly this actually works the graphics are supported so if i plug this in like that and turn the monitor on that is it should appear hopefully if not you have to turn the computer off and turn it back on so actually that took quite a while, I had to restart the device and then the second display would work. And you have to change the resolution down further because it has this weird flickering thing. But surprisingly it does actually work, meaning productivity increases exponentially. So that is kind of insane. You can work at different things, you can even run Photoshop on this thing. So you could actually use this as a daily driver and not be limited in too many ways. You have the internet, everything, email. You're just gonna suffer from the speed. It's not exactly the most fastest processor or anything. Oh yeah, I can show you the specs of it. We have four gigs of RAM and an Intel Core Duo. 
P7450 running at 2.13 gigahertz. That's two cores, probably two threads. I uh, installed Steam and Steam runs. So pretty much this is a laptop that you could use in 2019. It could pretty much do anything that a modern laptop could do. Obviously not a gaming laptop, but pretty much like a notebook, this thing could pretty much do just a little bit slower. Now if it did not work for you, please leave a comment in the description and I will try to help you in any way that I can. And yeah, that's pretty much it, showing you how it works. I don't know the exact speed compared this running Ubuntu or Mac OS, which would be the fastest. I'm guessing Mac because it's on a MacBook. But surprisingly, everything is supported except the camera and the Wi-Fi as far as I know. And this is actually not that bad of a laptop. So that's pretty much it. That's how you install Ubuntu on a 2008 MacBook. If you have any questions about how I install it or if it did not work for you, please leave a comment in the description. I will try to help you. And if you want to know anything else about running Ubuntu on your Mac, just leave a comment and like for instance, how to run Wine applications on your Ubuntu so you can have Windows applications on your Ubuntu like I did, which is really cool. If you want to know how to do that, please leave a comment and leave a like so I know I should make that video. Anyway, with that being said, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.